autonomous mode, we can hear the beep uh, warning people that works in the bus depot that we are in a fully autonomous mode. We added two screens, one that can uh, show the driver uh, that doesn't do anything with the steering wheel or the pedals as well. And this uh, is the obstacle detection and I will uh, go back to this part right after. So to enable a bus to be autonomous, we need mainly four parts. First, to change the architecture of the bus and to be able to drive the bus by wire. This, is a, this was a job of uh, Iveco, the bus manufacturer. Uh, we also need guidance uh, of the bus and localization. It has been done by the CEA, the research lab. And the obstacle detection for the safety has been uh, developed by uh, RATP. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, more in detail the localization once we will, we will depart. And I'm going to uh, explain to you what we are seeing right now in, on this screen. So now we are at the ramp of the bus depot, uh, where we were when we were at the entrance. The fleet management system sent to the bus the request of the parking space, and the system acknowledged the request and autonomously drove the bus to the specified space. So. It's fully autonomous. You can see here the gray, the gray part is the area covered by the lidars. It's the sensors for the obstacle detection. We have two at the front, two on the sides, and one at the back of the bus. So if the bus sees an obstacle in the gray area, it will slow down. And you can also see the red area, which is the emergency area detection of the lidars. And if you see uh, an obstacle in the red area, it will slow quite abruptly, actually. Uh, there is a good example here, because we are going to see with the LIDARs the bus that is up right on the left. So this is the bus seen by the LIDARs. So the different color represents on the pink purple the back LIDARs, on the blue and yellow the LIDARs on the side and the various layers can, uh, here is the two lidars at the, at the front of the bus. Uh, we will going to, to see them uh, when we will be parked. So here, uh, we, this is the minus two level of the bus depot. And in this demonstration, we are going to park at minus three. So the speed of the bus is 7.3 let's say a kilometer per hour uh, and the speed limit of the bus depot is 8 so we respect the speed limit of the bus depot so now we are going to, to, the, to the left you can see that the emergency brake area and the area of detection of the LIDAR Change when the bus is moving. It depends on the on the speed of the bus, mainly and the trajectory as well. You can see here uh, the different layers seen by the lidars. So you, you can see the columns of the bus. It can really see its environment in the bus depot. Ah. <laughs> So, an expected situation, uh, because we were supposed to park at, uh, at the 443 space, but uh, another bus has taken our space. <laughs> so, Benoit, the driver, is going to, is going to remove this uh, bus, uh, and then the autonomous mode will go back. Uh, so. It gives me the time to talk a little bit about the localization. Um, as, you knew, as you have noticed, the bus depot is underground. So GPS would have been complicated to use in this case. Um, this is why the CEA, the research lab, use uh, cameras and the inertial measurement unit for the localization, uh, merged, merged with the odometer of the bus. So thanks to the camera that we are going to see when we will be parked, there are four cameras, two that looks its environment and two that looks uh, on the ground to check the lane and the bus uh, numbers. We have only added minor modification on the infrastructure 
with uh, mural paintings on the walls. Uh, we will check them uh, when we will be out and uh, uh, depart the bus to the entrance. We added mural for the camera because it's not the case here, but in the ramp, all the walls are grey and blank and making it difficult for the camera to discern its environment. This is why we added some mural paintings for the camera to have some visual markers. Uh, because for the localization, first we drove the bus with the driver and the camera, and the camera recorded the environment. And in the software, there is a pre-recorded map of the, of the bus depot. Uh, and when the bus is in uh, autonomous mode, we are checking if what it sees in real time is the same that in the pre-recorded map. So it, it used the SLAM technology, simultaneous localization and mapping, and mapping in this, uh, in this uh, context. So okay, now the driver removed the bus. So we are going to, to restart the autonomous mode. So now we were in manual mode. Here. I hear the beep so I know that we are in autonomous mode and we are going to see that now the tra trajectory is a reverse on the grey here and we can see here the two lidars detected by the, the two buses sorry, detected by the lidars and we are going to park very, in a very great accuracy between the two buses. I'm just going to show you what the cameras can see in real time. Here the bus uh, parked the same way that the driver does, go forwards and reverse into the space. But with no intervention of the driver. It's very smooth. And, it and now we are parked. It could apply the handbrake itself, or does someone still have to actually... No, no, so everything is uh, controlled by the system, the okay. autonomous system that we implement. Uh, we can't really see the driver's legs, but I can guarantee you that he doesn't. <laughs>